Jane Goodall. While other children dreamt of following in the footsteps of great scientists and artists, a little girl growing up in war-battered England in the 1940s favored the stories of Tarzan and Dr. Doolittle who lived in the jungles of Africa with their wild companions. That girl was Jane Goodall. Goodall grew up determined to share a forest home with African animals and never expected that her dedication to these animals would lead her to fame as a naturalist. In today's video, we will look at the life of the extraordinary naturalist, Jane Goodall, who devoted her life to the study of animals and changed forever the way we see the chimpanzee, our closest primate relative. We hope this video gives you the courage you need to believe in yourself and pursue your biggest dreams. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other exciting videos like this. On April 3rd, 1934, Valerie Jane Morris Goodall was born in London, England, to Mortimer, an engineer, and Van, an auto. Jane loved animals even as a child. When she was just only one year old, her father gave her a stuffed chimpanzee in honor of a baby chimpanzee born at the London Zoo. Friends of her parents warned that such a gift would cause nightmares for a child. However, Jane loved the toy and named the chimpanzee Jubilee, carrying it with her everywhere. At the age of just five, Jane hid for hours in a hen house to discover where the eggs come from, on her way her family was frantically searching for her. Upon Jane's return to the house, Jane's mother saw how excited she was and rather than scolding her, instead sat down to listen as Jane told her story. Jane dreamt of living in Africa to watch and write about animals. Although this was an unusual goal for a girl at the time, Jane's mother encouraged her. Jane's childhood was a happy one with much time spent playing and exploring outside her family home in Bournemouth. But World War II came raging and Jane's father had to join the army as an engineer, disappearing from his daughter's life for a time. After the war time, after the war divorced, Jane left school in 1952 but couldn't afford to go to university. She went to a secretarial college and worked for a time at Oxford University typing documents. Later, she worked for a London filmmaking company, choosing music for documentaries. In May 1956, Jane's friend, Clomange, invited Jane to her family farm in Kenya. Jane quit her London job, moved back home to Bournemouth, and worked as a waitress to save enough money for boat fare. In April 2, 1957, at the age of 23, Jane traveled to Kenya by boat. She had a wonderful time seeing Africa and meeting new people. But the most important event of her visit is meeting famous anthropologist and paleontologist Dr. Louis S. B. Leakey. Jane managed to impress Leakey with her knowledge of Africa and its wildlife to the extent that he hired her as his assistant. She traveled with Leakey and his wife, archaeologist Mary Leakey, to Old Vai George in Tanzania, on a fossil hunting expedition, Leakey eventually encouraged Goodall to study chimpanzees, animals that he believed could provide us with a window into our beginnings. Jane observed meat eating for the first time on October 30th, 1961. Later, she saw the chimpanzees hunt for meat. These observations disproved the widely held belief that chimpanzees are vegetarian. On November 4th, 1961, Jane observed David Greybeard and Goliath making tools to extract termites from their mounds. They would select a thin branch from a tree, strip the leaves and push the branch into the termite mound. After a few seconds, they would pull out the termite-covered stick and pick off the tasty termites with their lips. One of Jane's most important discoveries. Until that time, only humans were thought to create tools. On hearing of Jane's observations, Leakey famously says, Now we must redefine tool, redefine man, or accept chimpanzees as humans. Jane's work in Gombe became more widely known and in 1962, she was accepted at Cambridge University as a PhD candidate, one of the very few people to be admitted without a university degree. Some scholars and scientists gave Jane a cold reception and criticized her for giving the chimpanzees names. It would have been more scientific to give them numbers, they said. Jane had to defend an idea that might now seem obvious, that chimpanzees have emotions, minds, and personalities. National Geographic decided to sponsor Jane's work and sent photographer and filmmaker Hugo Van Lawick to document Jane's life in Gombe. In August 1963, Jane published her first article in National Geographic, My Life Among Wild Chimpanzees. Van Lawick and Jane fell in love and got married in 1964. They had one son, Hugo Eric Louis Van Lawick, known to family and friends as Grub. Jane earned her PhD in ethology, the study of animal behavior, in 1965. Also in 1965, National Geographic grants funded for the construction of aluminium buildings at Gombe and with these first permanent structures on the site, the Gombe Stream Research was born. In 1974, Jane and Hugo divorced amicably. In 1975, Jane got married to Derek Bryson. 
member of Tanzanian parliament and director of Tanzanian National Parks. Derek passed away five years later after battling with cancer. In 1977, Jane founded the Jane Goodall Institute for Wildlife Research, Education and Conservation. In 1984, Jane began the groundwork for Chimpanzu, an international research program of the Jane Goodall Institute dedicated to the study of captive chimpanzees and the improvement of their lives through research, education and enrichment. During November of 1986, at a scientific conference in Chicago organized around the release of Jane's scholarly work, The Chimpanzees of Gombe, Patterns of Behavior, Jane and fellow attendees were stunned as conservative speakers made clear the extent of habitat destruction across Africa and its threats to chimpanzee survival. Jane left the conference knowing that she must leave Gombe behind and work to conserve wild chimpanzees. In 1988, Jane founded another Jane Goodall Institute in the UK as a charity organization. In 1991, Jane and 16 Tanzanian students founded Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots, JGI's Global Environmental and Humanitarian Education Program for Young People, the Lake Tanganyika Catchment Reforestation and Education Project, TACARE, was launched in 1994. The program helps communities situated around Lake Tanganyika to create sustainable livelihoods, agriculture, microfinance initiatives and education as a means to conserve local habitat and animal species. On April 16, 2002, United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan appointed Jane to serve as a United Nations Messenger of Peace. Jane was made a dame of the British Empire, the equivalent of a knighthood, on February 20, 2004. During a ceremony at Buckingham Palace in London in 2006, Dr. Goodall received the French Legion of Honor presented by the Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin as well as the UNESCO Gold Medal Award. Dr. Goodall's list of publications includes Hope for Animal and Their World, How Endangered Species Are Being Rescued from the Brink, Two Overviews of Our Work at Gombe, In the Shadow of Man and Through a Window, as well as two autobiographies in letters, the best-selling autobiography, Reason for Hope and Many Children's Books, The Chimpanzees of Gombe, Patterns of Behavior is the definitive scientific work on chimpanzees and is the culmination of Dr. Goodall's scientific career. Jane has been the subject of numerous television documentaries and is featured in the large screen format film, Jane Goodall's Wild Chimpanzees 2002. She also has been featured in five Animal Planet specials, Jane Goodall's Return to Gombe, Jane Goodall's State of the Great Ape, Jane Goodall's Heroes, When Animals Talk, and most recently, Almost Human. Goodall lived at Gombe almost full-time until 1975, accumulating a wealth of long-term data still valued by today's researcher. Since then, she has founded Jane Goodall's Institute in nine countries, including Tanzania, the United Kingdom, and the United States. These days, she continues her studies from afar, focusing her attention on a passionate campaign for chimpanzee conservation and research, and speaking against the non-essential use of chimps in medical research. She travels the world giving speeches often punctuated by her haunting renditions of chimp calls and raising funds for the half dozen chimpanzee refugees she has established in Africa. Compassion and concern for the species has swelled in recent years, partially due to Goodall's proof of the similarities between chimps and humans. At the same time, however, there is a mounting interest in using them for medical research, an unfortunate one in Goodall's view.